Sorry. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the James City County Planning Commission. It is April 6, 2022 at 6 p.m. Mr. Holt, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Rogers. Here. Mr. Rogers represents the Berkeley District. Ms. Knoll. Present. Ms. Knoll represents the Stonehouse District. Mr. Rose. Here. Mr. Rose represents the Roberts District. Mr. Polster. Here. Mr. Polster represents the Jamestown District and is vice chair to the commission. Mr. Haldeman. Here. Mr. Haldeman is an at-large member. Mr. Kropp. Here. Mr. Kropp represents the Powhatan District. Mr. O'Connor. Here. Mr. O'Connor is an at-large member and is chair of the planning commission. I'm Paul Holt, director of community development and planning for the county. And sitting to my left is Ms. Liz Parman, our deputy county attorney. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Holt. First item on our agenda this evening is public comment. This is time reserved for anybody who wishes to address the Planning Commission for any items not for public hearing this evening. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? Yes, ma'am. Uh, hi, my name is Sharon Dennis. Do I have to tell you where I live? 100 St. George's Boulevard, Williamsburg, Virginia, 23185. I've been before you before and we were talking about my particular uh, SUP. Pushing that aside, lately I've been driving around town before all the trees grew in and I'm taking notice of certain things that are happening here in our community. What I'm also going to tell you is um, it's quite the luxury to be involved, to see what's going on in the community because most people who are actually living in it and have a stake in it they're young, they have families, they're busy. I know I am. I have been, I had a daycare center. I spent most of my time just taking care of everyone. So I didn't have time to do what is what I consider a luxury, and that is to look around town and see what's going on. Now I grew up in Brooklyn, and I have lived in a lot of places, and I've seen the before, the during, and the after. I know what's coming. In fact, I believe, uh, Mr. Holderman, you mentioned when there was an issue about building out in um, Tawana or even nearby another another development, and you yourself recognize that we're going to grow exponentially until we don't recognize Williamsburg any longer. I'm saying a few things here because I think about this. I came here, I've come to a few places when I left Brooklyn. My family thought I was crazy. I wanted to see trees. I didn't want to see the buildup. And for anyone that's been lucky to live in places, you know, as we get older, the young ones aren't even going to see it. They're not going to get there. I've lived in some beautiful places, I was lucky, until they changed. Because growth, exponential growth. But then I think Colonial Williamsburg, if it hadn't been for Rockefeller and others, right now, I believe the commission would have made that um, into some kind of apartment complex. I just see the place getting developed without any kind of considerations for what I heard early on. This is how I lost my daycare center, by the way. Ironbound Road, it was said, oh no, you can't put driveway to the side and to the back, because it's a historic corridor. Well, there's a joke, because we're taking all that down. I was the one who was trying to keep it that way. So what I'm seeing is building after building going up, that monstrosity that's on um, Monticello. Do you know the one I'm talking about, the one that's the apartment complex for the students? I'm hearing from young people that their rents are anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 a month for a room. So I don't see where we're going with the short, uh, the um, affordable housing in this community because I see I'm glad I got my properties when I did 20 years ago, but I don't see it anymore. So I also heard, I looked into I think it was Eisenhower who started to applaud when we had um, was it the pottery? That's her. It's her place. She can do what she wants with it. There's some limitations to what we can do if people have pers their own property and what it's zoned for. But what I was amazed at was I heard how people applauded. They applauded that monstrosity. I said, I thought this is the best thing that ever happened to us. All I'm saying is, is anyone really seeing what's happening? You've lived a life where you got to enjoy this place. I think it's going away. I want to see it saved. So I'm asking right now, has there been any considerations for really keeping it rural, or are we just giving it over to the highest bidder? Because I see the highest bidder winning. Oh, by the way, when I mentioned how Ryan Holmes was 500000 and above, Dennis, the next time they took down that sign, because they know, 
Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the commission? Yes, ma'am. Hello, I'm Emily Martell. I live off Lake Powell Road. I'm a mom of three. That road has gotten really busy with the buildup down, um, way down the end. And my son is at the bus stop and the cars come racing around to that corner. I'm right on the corner across from Holly Ridge, not Holly Ridge, the- Ms. Martell, is this about the land use application this evening? It's about the Airbnb. Right, so that's for the public hearing. So that'll be a little bit later in our agenda. Okay. So that'll be your time to, when we open the public hearing for that, that'll be your time to address that. Not public comment. What's that? So not right now. So not this portion of the okay. agenda, but when we open the public hearing, then you can speak to that case. Okay. Thank you. Great, thanks. Anybody else? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close the public comment and move on to reports of the commission. Uh, Ms. Null, Development Review Committee. Mr. Chairman, the Development Review Committee met at 4 o'clock on the 3rd of March. The committee members present were remotely Barbara Null, Rob Rose, Frank Polster. Staff members present were Terry Costello, Deputy Zoning Administrator Joe Ribeiro, Planner Josh Crump, Senior Planner Katie Pelletier, Administrator Ms. Brandy Weiler, and Steve Romero from the Virginia Housing Board, Mr. Graham Corson, AES, and members of the Smith Baptist Church, Mr. Smith, Mr. Kenny Heath, Mr. Randy Taylor, and Mr. Jeremiah St. Clair. <clears throat> Regarding site plan SP190001, Powhatan Terrace, this item was placed on the Development Review Committee DRC agenda with the request to allow the installation of utilities, entrance features, and signs within the 150-foot buffer along the property's frontage with Jamestown Road. There were no questions for staff and the applicant and the applicant. DRC approved the proposed features within 150 foot buffer with a vote of three to zero. Conceptual plan 220021, 3341 Chickahominy Road overhead utility. The zoning ordinance requires all new utility connections to be placed underground. The applicant was requesting a waiver of this requirement. There were no questions for staff and the applicant was not present. The DRC re recommends approval of this waiver request to the Planning Commission with a vote of three to zero. Site Plan 200037, Smith Memorial Baptist Church parking expansion. The proposal is to add 78 parking spaces to the current 156 spaces on site for a total of 234 parking spaces. The planning director denied the parking waiver based on non-compliance with the community character corridor buffer requirements for a 50-foot buffer. There were no questions for staff. The applicant, Mr. Graham Corson, AES, made a presentation outlining the scope of the project and stated that the current standard of one parking space accommodating five people was out of date. Their research indicated comparable churches plus a survey of their church indicated that one parking space for 1.5 people the Smith Baptist Church currently has agreements with adjacent property owners for overflow parking. Smith Baptist Church has two services on Sunday with 300 parishioners in attendance at each service. They are a growing church and are, and are building the additional parking space so that if in the future they are denied the ability to use overflow parking in adjacent properties, they can accommodate parishioner parking. If the 50-foot buffer is not waived, the church would lose 18 parking spaces. The applicant hearing the concerns expressed by the committee on not waiving the 50-foot buffer requirement proposed three alternatives that would add a reduced buffer. Members centered discussions on option three with the 25-foot buffer and the loss of six parking spaces. At this point, Josh Crump, senior planner, interviewed, intervened, stating that the staff had not had a chance to evaluate the proposals and requested a deferral till the staff had time to evaluate and discuss the proposals with the accident with the applicant, the DRC agreed to the deferral. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Null. Any questions? And Mr. Polster, no report. We covered that the last meeting, so, Sir. and have had no meeting since then. So thank you very much. On our consent agenda this evening, we have the minutes of the March 2nd, 2022 regular meeting. The minutes of the March 14th, 2022 regular meeting, 
and the DRC action items, SP19-0001, Powhatan Terrace, and conceptual plan 22-0021-3341, Chickahominy Road Overhead Utility Waiver, and site plan 21-0001, Stonehouse Land Bay 5. Um, usually the items on the consent agenda are considered non-controversial, and I will throw it out for either a motion or if anybody would like to remove one for discussion, happy to entertain that as well. Move to approve. So there's a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And next on our agenda this evening is our only public hearing, SUP-22-0001.0001. Our 001 3 Markley Road Tourist Home. So, good evening, Mr. Reisinger. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. Ms. Kenya Devalier has applied for a special use permit to allow for the short term rental of a four bedroom single family home at 3 Markley Road. The property is zoned R8 Rural Residential, is designated airport on the Comprehensive Plan land use map, and is located inside the primary service area. The property is served by public sewer and a private well. If granted, this SCP would allow for short-term rentals throughout the year. No changes to the footprint of the home are proposed. Staff finds some favorable factors for this application, such as the presence of adequate off-street parking and that the applicant will obtain the proper licensing and inspections. Staff finds the proposed use will not negatively impact surrounding property or development nor is it expected to negatively impact levels of service for roads and other public services. While staff believes the location can be considered uniquely and complementary to the airport comprehensive plan designation, staff finds that the proposal is not fully consistent with the adopted 2045 comprehensive plan recommendations for short-term rentals. Therefore, staff is unable to recommend approval of this application. Should the Planning Commission recommend approval of this application, staff has included proposed conditions for your consideration. I am happy to answer any questions you may have, and the applicant is also in attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Rogers? Good evening. When I was reading the staff report, there was a phrase, and, and you used it again just now, which is uh, uniquely and complementary to, can you just Tell me in plain language what that means. Right. So with the airport designation, uh, principal suggested uses for that designation are aviation. However, secondary uses would include airport-related commercial and office development. And so for a short-term rental on the property, that could be considered complementary to the airport for the patrons of the airport. Does that answer your question? I think it does. I, I, I may have gotten hung up on unique. Right, and that uh, in part comes from the recommendations for short-term rentals where it does allow for unique uh, situations to be considered. Thank you. And Mr. Rogers, too, I'll add to that and supplement that to say that it's only this property in the entirety of the county that has an airport designation. So, you know, uh, not to split hairs too much, but you know, areas like low density residential could be spread throughout the county, rural lands are spread throughout the county from top to bottom, side to side, et cetera, et cetera. Airport designation itself is a bit unique and is limited to just these few parcels. So. Any other questions for staff? Thank you. At this point, I would like to open up the public hearing. So, Mr. Getty, are you making a presentation tonight, or are you just here to answer questions? Okay. So, I mean, pretty much um, said everything, so, but I reiterate. Uh, could you state your name and address for us, please? Okay. Uh, my address? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my name is Kenya DeValier, address 4001 Cedarwood Lane, Williamsburg, Virginia. Is that it? 
I just read a little bit of what I've had um, prepared. Sorry, we can't hear you. <clears throat> All right, so I am requesting a SUP for 3 Marclay Road um, in Williamsburg, Virginia to operate an Airbnb. According to the zoning ordinance, it says the property is zoned R8 rural residential. However, according to the comprehensive plan land use map, the zoning is not designated residential because the property is located on the land that is designated airport. Um, this is actually a unique case because this home is the only property that is located on the Williamsburg Jamestown Airport land. Three Bar Clay Road is located at the edge of the airport property line on a major road at the corner of Mark Clay Road and Drive connecting with Lake Powell Road. Utilizing this property as an Airbnb model would be a great asset to the area, especially to the airport. The Airbnb is approximately 0.4 miles away from the airport where it would provide convenient lodging accommodations to many of the airport customers flying in. The Airbnb services would be advertised on the Williamsburg Jamestown Airport website due to many airport patrons inquiring about nearby lodging accommodations. And it will also be another great option to other visitors coming to the area as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Are you the owner of the property? I'm not. Larry Waltrip is the okay. owner. He's not here though tonight. No, he's not present, um, but we do have representatives for him here as well, if you have any questions. I have one question. Um, it said that somewhere in your letter and so forth that someone would be managing the property, but no one is on site. So do you have a management contract with someone to come take care of all of that? Um, so yes, we do have um, the ability where someone can be present in the home, should this be approved. To live in the home? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. Ms. Martell, I'm sorry, Mr. Getty, go ahead. What's that? Okay, Ms. Martell, so this would be your, your opportunity. So if you would, just um, state your name and your address for us, please. Martell. 886 Lake Powell Road. My house is on that map. <laughs> I'm right down the street from this location. Um, as I was saying earlier, the coming from the left side of my home, further down, the traffic is awful. And there's another Airbnb to the right, a blue home, that, to be honest, when it came into the area where I decided to raise my kids for the family area, I was nervous to have strangers come into the area and I can honestly say that it's been nothing but pleasant the people who are there are quieter than the local neighbors that they don't speed out of their house it's been really really pleasant and I've had family come in from out of town and stay so close by that they can walk to my house <laughs> so that's been really nice and I it's the family unit that you want um, the people, my family that stay there, walked to the airport and ate at Charlie's restaurant. So it helped the community too, and they loved that they were able to do that. So I am here to support this. I think it's a great thing, and I, I while once was hesitant, I, I find that the people that are staying at the Airbnb are kind and respect a home because they're coming into a home, not a hotel or anything to party. And they respect the area because they're coming into an area where there's family. Well, I can't say the same for all of the neighbors around. I wish that I could, but I can't. So I'm here to support. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Getty. Excuse me. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I'm Vernon Getty. Uh, I am here because I got a call late yesterday from the owner, Larry Waltrip, asking if I could come tonight on his behalf. He is unfortunately out of town. 
Uh, and I'm obviously here to speak in support of this. I, I do think this is a very unique property that's grown up over time with the airport itself, the other commercial operations, and then this home. Uh, this was a home that the Waltrips built for Larry's parents and who lived there. And uh, his mother most recently died a number of years ago, and it's been put to a number of uses since then, but none of the Waltrips live there. Um, I do think, and I'll echo what both the applicant and the young lady just said, I think this would not have any adverse impacts on their neighborhood, and I think it makes total sense for the airport and this business. So I think there'd be a very symbiotic relationship that um, would be good for all involved. So uh, on behalf of Larry, I would urge you to recommend approval. And would try to answer any questions if I can. Any questions of Mr. Getty? Just want to say I'm sorry for your tar heels. So, oh, so close. So <laughs> close. <laughs> Thank you. So, Wait, Mr. Getty, just Mr. Mr. <laughs> I may have just been confused with the two speakers about whether it's owner occupied. I, th I, th I thought the way I had read the Airbnb provisions, it talks about an on site resident as opposed to just someone who's available. Yeah. So, and it sounded like that was. Associates. Who is who will always who will be living in the on the property? I'm going to defer that to the not just available to the property, right? Yeah. Mr. Valier, we, do you mind stepping up so we can get it recorded? Yes, with the um, understanding that the laws have changed or the policies have changed, um, we do understand that that is a requirement. So yes, if should it be approved, um, that is something we will be able to do. I didn't, did I answer your question? So no one lives there now? No. It's not like an owner who wants to rent parts of their house, but you all will provide a keeper of some kind. Absolutely, yes. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thanks. <clears throat> Anybody else wish to speak to this application? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 100 St. George's Boulevard and so forth. So I absolutely think this is a wonderful idea because when my family comes to visit, they don't want to stay in hotels. So that's number one. I'm all about it. I look forward to it. I love Charlie's Restaurant. I like the airport. I think it's great. My question is, when did you all come up with that people have to live inside of a house to be able to do this? I know that the SUP that I do have on Ironbound Road, because it was designated tourist home, I don't live in it. I don't want to live in it. My tenants, do, the visitors don't want me to live in it. And I can tell you there's problems with people that actually are present when their guests are there. In the opposite regard, when I was a guest somewhere up in New York visiting because my uncle had died, I was in a uh, beautiful mansion-like house. And the gentleman had an English basement for which I stayed. He lived upstairs. I will never do that again. I mean, he was inviting me to whatever for the night. So I don't know where we're thinking that. I'd like to hear when you did this commission and you did this study why that's such an important element of security for the neighborhood. There are 14, I believe, SUP'd uh, Airbnbs or short-term rentals in the area. I've had no complaints. I asked zoning, do they have any complaints? They have no complaints. There's no complaints. I'll tell you, you get more complaints, and I'll bet you if we took police reports for your long-term renters, I know I have, and I say this over and over again. So I'm wondering where the boogeyman came where you shoved these rules in, as if people have to live with their guests. It's actually, in my opinion, a negative. It does nothing to add value to security in the neighborhood. So you have these already operating. They're SUP'd. You have no um, problems with them. But why did this become an issue? Why is this your got to babysit the uh, adults that come to visit Williamsburg. Can someone answer to that? Since not, thank you. Anybody else wish to address this hearing? Seeing and hearing none, I will close the public hearing and turn it over for discussion.
I'll, I'll start. Um, I thought this was a, an interesting case, uh, and an, I drove around the area yesterday, and, and it's obvious that there's no residential um, in, intrusion uh, affected by this application. I know that uh, the comprehensive plan establishes performance standards for tourist homes and short-term rentals, and the intent being to um, protect or to, to add a safeguard to some of the residential neighborhoods in previous years. We've seen a lot of these requests come forward. Most of the comments against the requests were from neighbors who were concerned that it would start a domino effect of transient rentals that if the owner wasn't um, on site to or living there that uh, there would be a lack of control that would uh, concern some of the uh, adjoining neighbors. So that's one of the reasons why it showed up in the comp plan. And the comp plan performance standards uh, are more stringent than the zoning ordinance um, for short-term rentals in a, in a sense. But um, the whole idea was to try to uh, provide some measure of comfort for residential neighborhoods. Since this is not a residential neighborhood we're talking about, uh, my inclination is to say that, you know, th that this is a unique application and um, I would recommend approval. And it sounds also like the applicant uh, is going to um, uh, correct the one staff concern about having somebody living on the property. So in a sense, um, this this might meet all, meet all of the the criteria, the, the performance standards that have been set up for it. But um, my bottom line is that I think it is unique enough that uh, I would support this application. Ulster, I have a question for the county attorney uh, on this. As I looked at the staff conditions in here, I see nothing in this that would say that we could enforce somebody living there. So could you give us a legal opinion of how enforceable that's going to be? If it's not in the zoning ordinance, then I don't imagine it's enforceable. If it's in the comprehensive plan, that's an aspirational document. But if you want to include it as a, as a condition. Is it enforceable? I believe it is, yes. Certainly you don't have to include it as a condition. I mean, certainly, if that's if that's something that the commission, in consideration of a recommendation tonight, would like us to work further on with with developing some language with the county attorney's office, see what we could see what we could come up with that would um, be enforceable as applicable to the special use permit before it hits the board of supervisors. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, you know, my my problem with with these are that the SUP is forever. And I don't know what happens when this property turns over and whether or not those conditions will ever be there. And so, you know, even though we say we can't do it, if there was a condition here that said that this SUP only existed for this property owner and not transferable, I would then consider that aspect of it. But since it doesn't, we have no guarantee. About this. So the, the other, other point that I wanted to make was the uh, resident that you're talking about down there on Markley Road um, actually has an owner that lives there. And that's why we approved that one for it. Uh, and so this is not a new issue. As a matter of fact, we spent a year and a half in the comp plan with a special charge from the supervisors to look at the standards that they finally approved of the four. And one of them was that the resident had to be occupied by the owner. Now, I, I'm, I'm not about to throw that work away or refute what the board has approved when we know in this application that the owner is not going to reside there. I mean, otherwise, why did we put the standards in place? So I'm not inclined to uh, support this for that very reason. And because we have successfully seen this work in the past in this community. And we do not have a reputation of party houses or things like that because of the responsibility of those owners, which was pointed out. So anyhow, that, that's, that's where I stand on this. A 
Dr. Rose? I guess I'll weigh in. Um, I, I see your point. I, I feel a little less concerned of that because it is part of Jamestown Williamsburg Airport and, and the owner is uh, running the airport. I think my concern comes in with your earlier point. What happens if the property gets sold? And it, it's we're certainly in a housing crisis right now where you have to outbid other people just to get a place to live. And I think there's some concern that more of these places are going to get snapped up as Airbnbs. Even Airbnb is starting to buy property. So there is that risk that yeah. the owner gets approved, turns around, and sells it to Airbnb for uh, for a significant profit, I imagine, on a place like this. So I, I'm less concerned about the ownership and more concerned, right. less concerned about the owner living there and more long concerned term. about the long-term right. uh, status of this in terms of who owns this and how does the SUP transfer. And I, it sounds like, though, we can't do anything about that. Our hands are tied in that case. We are. I mean, the last time we had Mr. Kinsman here, there was no way we could put that condition in there, as I understand it, unless it's done. I defer to my uh, superior on that. <laughs> I <give> you, a, <laughs> you know, we can always try to enforce conditions, but if you could overturn Adam's opinion <laughs> while he's no, gone, I wouldn't <laughs> dare do that. I'll teach him. <laughs> Would you clarify that? Um, th are you saying that um, we could attempt to put language in there in as a condition for this SUP, um, st stating that the owner should live there, but it, it's questionable as to its enforcement? Is yes. That uh, that is what I'm saying. Okay. But we could uh, draft language to that effect. We could try and you could recommend that to the Board of Supervisors, certainly, and they can consider it. Do you, just a, a question for clarification, um, you know, would it be the owner or the owner's agent? I just, if I understand this correctly, it's being, it's being contracted out to be managed, so you know, if we limit it to the owner, then then the owner's agent who's going to be managing the place would be sort of out of the loop. So. A rocky course. That was my concern also. You know, the owner's not going to be living on site. They're going to hire somebody to live there, to let them live for free, which means they don't have any skin in the game, actually. So I, I recognize I'm usually in the minority p opinion and, a, and opposed <laughs> to these things, um, but um, you know, given the location and that this is part of the airport, I actually think it's almost an accessory use to the airport, only because you know there are no nearby hotels to that airport. Um, you know, and um, I actually have a a boss that that flies in on occasion and. You know, if he gets sucked in for weather or something, then, you know, there's really not a convenient place because he doesn't have a car. So um, so I actually think this is a, a use that is um, unique to the property because it is an airport designation and, and would support it. So I would be inclined to actually support this, this application as opposed to some of the others that I have opposed. Mr. Haldeman. Uh, I, like Ms. Markell, live within walking distance of this property, um, and I'm very comfortable with it uh, for the very reason. I, I think the word unique is helpful in this in this one case. Uh, it's not part of a neighborhood. I, when, when I've looked at these in the past, uh, and I, I've usually uh, been quick to deny or recommend denial, but um, if it somehow corrupts the residential nature of a community, um, that's a problem for me. This doesn't, there is no, uh, this is not part of a residential community. It's part of a commercial operation, really. Um, I hadn't thought of it in the terms you put it, but I agree with you, um, uh, Mr. O'Connor. Um, so I, I plan to support it. Um, Just to, to qualify, I'm not going to recommend adding an additional statement about who should reside there. And uh, in my comments, I felt it was unique enough also and, and not part of a residential neighborhood. So I don't want to muddy the waters by recommending that the proposed conditions be modified. 
Any other discussion? Motion? Motion to approve SUP 22-0001, 3 Markley Road, Tourist Home. Thank you, Mr. Crump. Mr. Holt, we have a motion to approve. And just for clarification, that's with the minutes as, oh, with the conditions as proposed by staff? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Croft. Aye. Mr. Haldeman. Aye. Mr. Polster. No. Mr. Rose. Aye. Ms. Null. Aye. Mr. Rogers. Aye. And Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you very much. At this point, we are up to Planning Commission considerations, of which we have none. So, Mr. Holt, the Planning Director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Um, really, other than what's been prepared and included in your agenda packets, I don't have anything additional this evening. But uh, if you have questions, I'd be glad to take them. Any questions for Mr. Holt? No, not a question, and I could have waited until Planning Commission discussion, but uh, you, you all may have seen my email thanking Mr. Holt and his staff for adding the uh, chart that, that accompanies his planning director's report showing each month the, the upcoming cases, and I've already received some positive feedback from uh, a couple citizens in my district. So thank you and the staff for Thanks including for that. 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 Yes. <laughs> thank you. I've, I've, it's the same thing. It's great. It's great because then they can... Just look it up yep, instead exactly. of calling us. Uh, if nothing else for Mr. Holt, on to Planning Commission discussion and requests. Mr. Bolster. Uh, I thought the um, piece with the uh, Stonehouse piece uh, and the signal trip that, that's going to that warrant piece uh, is significant enough that we ought to make sure Ms. Sadler knows about that because of the public hearings that we heard for both the village and for the enterprise, especially with the speeding. And so that was one of my comments I made at that board meeting, that we would probably see a stoplight there to start slowing that traffic down besides that 45 miles in there. So I'm sure she'll be glad to hear that that thing is going to be tripped and there'll be a stoplight in there pretty soon. Any other discussion or requests? I had a recent conversation with Mr. Holt that um, I hope we'll get captured for the, the Board of Supervisors, and, and I realize that we have little little influence or little ability to, um, to impact, but, um, you know, we see a lot of VDOT pro projects going on, and I don't feel like VDOT is held to the same level of accountability as our developers are for um, stormwater management, um, for erosion and sediment controls, and... Uh, you know, most recently has been watching all the work at the Croker and Route 60 um, intersection. And just the last week, they put up a silt fence after they've done an incredible amount of land disturbing over there. And that's all that's going into um, our, our tributaries and, and our streams. And we're investing an incredible amount of money to make improvements and impacts to that and I just don't think VDOT is, is helping us out very much. So um, I don't know that, according to Mr. Holt, they self-police, so I don't know that we have much impact on that, but I would like to encourage our Board of Supervisors to have those conversations or request those pieces in the legislative updates. I just, you know, think we've seen a lot going on on, on the Long Hill Road project, and and now um, we'll see this road widening project, and I just think we need to do our our part to try to advocate for for the storm sheds. I had a chat with Tim about that because I live in Windsor Forest and have watched for the last uh, year and a half on that, and I'm absolutely shocked at at uh, the way they handle that, and they actually uh, one of the members of the stormwater advisory group who also lives in my neighborhood actually went up and talked to the uh, one of the um, construction folks with that BMP that was in there. And uh, they had no idea where that water flowed into, and it actually ends up in the headwaters of the Chisel Run, and it's, of course, been a, a mess for a year and a half. I mean, there's very little that I guess we get to do, but uh, it, it seems to me that we've got several other projects that we're going to see in the Skiffs Road area and on Pocahontas Trail 
that are upcoming uh, for it. And I'd hate to see uh, that not same thing happen that Tim's talking about. Thanks again to Beth. She's the one that took the photo of the steel girders going into place over 143 and the Skids Creek connector. She <laughs> well, I took the one the day that I came to. <laughs> <laughs> Told me a long time ago, go out there and get something paved. So <laughs> off, off I went and stops getting paved. So. <laughs> Great. Anything else? So, um, Mr. Haldeman, you have the, the duty next week for the uh, Board of Supervisors. And I think everybody, um, now that we're into April, everybody has committee assignments and Board of Supervisor coverage. So if you have any questions or challenges, please let me know. And other than that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So we have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you.